Today we're taking a look at the Geekom A7 Mini PC. I had reached out to Geekom to send this unit over for a review after taking a look at the IT12 Mini PC and being very impressed with it. I think these Mini PCs are super interesting and they have a very interesting value proposition because they're packing quite a bit into such a small package. The Geekom A7 that I have here today comes equipped with the Ryzen 7940HS CPU, but you can get it in a version that has the 7840. Both of those CPUs, though, will have the Radeon 780M integrated graphics. As for the 7940HS, this is a very fast Ryzen CPU. It features 8 cores, 16 threads, with boost clocks up to 5.2GHz, and a 16 megabyte L3 cache. The Radeon 780M iGPU that this PC features is basically the fastest integrated GPU that's out there. It's actually pretty seriously impressive. For not being a dedicated GPU in my opinion, this can really crank out decent performance in quite a few games. The Radeon 780M GPU features 768 shaders, 48 TMUs, 32 ROPs, and some ray tracing support with 12 ray tracing acceleration cores. To be honest, you really can't use ray tracing on this iGPU, but in my opinion, that doesn't even matter. You can legitimately game with this iGPU, and to me, for such a small PC, that's just crazy. I actually took this mini PC with me to a LAN party recently. I was able to play quite a few games and really didn't have too much of an issue at 1080p low graphics. I was pretty surprised and pretty happy with that kind of performance. As for the rest of the system specs though, this model is coming with a 2TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD. We've got 32GB of DDR5600 memory, which is a solid choice by Geekcom by the way. Overall, that's definitely going to help system performance and the iGPU. This system isn't all about gaming in a tiny form factor though. It's got fairly good desktop performance. I didn't have any issues driving multiple displays while I work from home, and I normally have YouTube and Twitch streams open as well. The whole PC uses about 10 watts while it's idling. Sometimes it can go up to 16 watts with YouTube 4K playback though. As for the power draw while gaming, I've seen the unit go up to about 70 watts on my kilowatt meter. The A7 model comes standard with a 2.5 gigabits per second Realtek RTL 8125GB-CG NIC. And in addition to that, the A7 also has a Wi-Fi 6E NIC. As for the I.O. on this little guy, we have a total of three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, one USB 4 Gen 3 Type-C port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, uh, we've got a single USB 2.0 port, and that's pretty much where you would just plug in like a hub for low power accessories. We've got one SD card reader, which is kind of nice by the way, especially if you want to offload like camera footage. We've got a 35 millimeter stereo headset jack which is on the front of the pc very nice attention to detail a lot of other pcs have this on the back on a mini pc like this you want that port on the front side we've also obviously got that one ethernet connection and finally we do have one of those smaller laptop like locks so you could actually lock this unit down somewhere it's definitely worth mentioning in my opinion that the power supply for the a7 is a 120 watt psu but it's very compact which I like. It doesn't get very hot even while gaming and even while gaming for a couple hours at a time. It's also nice that they supply an HDMI cable with this. It's a little short, looks like it's about three feet, but that should be enough generally speaking for how people are going to use these PCs. As for the mini PCs that Geekcom sells, these are basically all coming with Windows 11. This one specifically does have Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, which is nice. Just like with the IT12 though, I ran the Defender scan and installed Sophos Home. Just to check, no bad stuff, no malware, none of that was found. That's pretty much what I expected though. I've had pretty good experiences with Geekom so far. In terms of pre-installed software or junkware as people call it, there was pretty much nothing on this PC. I'm actually super impressed. A lot of pre-built PCs, you're gonna get some software that you don't want on it. But in the two that I've seen from Geekom so far, they've been free of all of that 
that, basically just your average Windows 11 image customized with the drivers that they need in order for everything to function. When I opened up the Geekcom A7, I was impressed. It looks like everything is pretty much sandwich packed in there, but there is still some room for airflow. In terms of the cooling, it is active. There is what is essentially a laptop fan that's sucking air in through the sides and exhausting it out the rear. Be careful when you open this up though, you might accidentally disconnect the Wi-Fi connection like I did. It's not too hard to reconnect, but you will have to do it if you're going to use the Wi-Fi. As we can see, we can remove the storage drives, and we can also remove the Wi-Fi card if we needed to, and the RAM is socketable. You could upgrade this to 64 gigabytes if you needed. Overall, I would say this is a solid value mini PC option if you're looking for a mini PC that has the 780M iGPU. Generally speaking, if you know that you need that iGPU, you're going to be gaming or you're going to be doing something that's graphically intensive and I think this PC is really going to accomplish anything that you could do with that iGPU pretty well. In terms of the two bundle options that they offer for the A7, I think it's a very good value. There's a nice selection of I.O. If you don't do AAA gaming, this could easily replace an older desktop pretty much for anyone, especially if your GPU has less horsepower than mm, say a GTX 1050 or maybe a 1050 Ti. Geekcom also warranties this PC for three years, which I think is a good amount of time for a pre-built PC like this. Geekcom has actually been around for about 20 years, so I feel pretty good about recommending these in general, and I think they stand behind the products. Now, everyone's pretty much wondering how is the CPU and the iGPU performance. Well, let's get into the benchmarks. First, I ran Cinebench R24, then Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead 2, Hogwarts Legacy, and the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark. I did also test DaVinci Resolve, ran through one of my projects just to get a feel for scrubbing performance and export performance. As for Cinebench R24, the A7 was able to score about 840 points on average, which actually puts it right around a stock 5800X desktop CPU. That's actually super amazing out of a mobile CPU with limited cooling. As for gaming, I ran the Cyberpunk 2077 1080p benchmark at native 1080p. We averaged about 44 FPS, which isn't bad, but when enabling FSR quality, I was able to squeak out just under 54 FPS on average, and I think that's pretty awesome for a gaming PC that doesn't have a GPU installed. I did give 1080p medium a try in Cyberpunk. It's definitely going to run, but the frame rates are a little bit lower. Native 1080p ran about 33 FPS, which isn't horrible, but a little bit lower, and FSR quality at 1080p medium averaged about 44 FPS. Personally, I'd run 1080p low, potentially with FSR quality for a little bit of a better frame rate. That gameplay was pretty good. As for the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark, I ran the 1080p low preset, which averaged about 34 FPS. When I reran that with FSR quality, we were able to get about 40 FPS, and the game was definitely a little bit more smooth. I thought that was great, so I would probably run this game with FSR quality enabled. In terms of Hogwarts Legacy for 1080p low, the system averaged about 28 FPS, which obviously isn't crazy high, but again, there's no dedicated GPU here. We have an integrated GPU with a small cooler and a small form factor, so I think 28 FPS on average with no upscaling is pretty good. As for enabling FSR quality in the 1080p benchmark, still using the low settings, we are able to average about 35 FPS. This definitely helped with the fluid motion, but there was a little bit of a visual sacrifice in this particular game. I still think it's worth it though to run FSR quality. Finally, we have the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark. This one definitely has some added GPU load over the older expansions. In running the 1080p desktop quality with the native resolution, the system scored about 35 to 3600 points on average, which is decent. I did rerun the benchmark with FSR always enabled, and we can actually bump that score up to just under about 4000 points on average, and it was definitely a little bit smoother. I wanted to check out the 1080p laptop preset with FSR always on to really see how much we could improve the frame rate and the score. The system averaged about 5200 points, which was pretty nice to see, but obviously there's a little bit of a quality trade-off. Still pretty awesome though considering there's no GPU 
and the power draw for the whole system is generally speaking is about 71 watts or less. This little A7 PC from Geekom really does pack quite a punch. In terms of DaVinci Resolve, I was able to scrub through a timeline that was a little more intensive. I had quite a few layers in this project and it was in 4K. As for the export time, predictably it did take a little bit longer than my desktop, but that's pretty much to be expected. Overall, I would still say I'm pretty happy with the DaVinci Resolve performance. I'm very impressed that if you're doing basic 4K editing in DaVinci Resolve, you can really get by with just using this mini PC and nothing else. I know there is a small niche amount of people out there that are kind of looking to replace their desktop or maybe even regular laptops with mini PCs. I would say if you're doing light gaming, light video editing, things like that, or if you just use your workstation for work and potentially one or two games here or there, I think this A7 from Geekom is really going to be a compelling option. I also think this is very compelling for people who travel a lot. Potentially laptops are too big or just not the right fit for whatever it is that you're doing. If you're vlogging or you still do old school LAN parties like I do, this is a pretty handy device to have. The mini PC does get a little bit warm while you're gaming, especially for longer sessions, but in general, I didn't have any issues. The longest I was using it for gaming was probably about four hours. I was playing some Valheim, and everything was running pretty well. I like that Geekom still includes some basic repairability and upgradability here in terms of the memory, the SSD, and the wireless NIC. It's super important to be able to access the insides of your PC to maintain it over time. Like all PCs with fans, you're going to get some dust in there, so you're going to have to blow it out once in a while. I didn't end up experimenting with Proxmox on the Geekom A7. I think that because this mini PC has the 7940HS and the 780M iGPU, probably not the target for most people for running Proxmox, but you definitely could. All of this hardware is compatible, and it's very well specced in both configurations. So if you're really interested in turning this into some kind of home lab machine, I definitely think you could do it. That USB-C 40 gigabit per second really opens up quite a few options. So I would say to sum it up, if you know that you're looking for the 780M iGPU and a really small form factor PC, the A7 from Geekom is definitely going to be a competitive option in the market. I like how the two different bundles are specced. I think they're going to serve anyone well. I like that you can actually get into the unit, replace some stuff if you need to, upgrade if you need to, and in general, it was just an easy experience to use this little mini PC. I know I'll definitely be continuing usage of this. I actually have some ideas for maybe some advanced or custom cooling that I might show on the channel later. Definitely let me know in the comment section if you're interested in seeing different ideas for cooling mini PCs or if you've done any yourself. I think we can eke out just a little bit more from that 780M if we can keep the temperature down just a little bit. If you're new around here, I would definitely say get subscribed if you're into gaming and home lab videos. That's basically what I do. And if this one helped you out, I would definitely say smash that like button. That'll help let YouTube know to recommend this video to other people who are looking at mini gaming PCs. Until the next video, keep on gaming.